choose our socks for success in all endeavors. Fortunes rises from the heel and good luck for life. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. Today in history, on this day 141 years ago, the Metropolitan Opera House in New York, USA, hosted its first performance. Built in 1965, it is a central part of New York's Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. The architectural style blends classical and modern elements. With a capacity of over 4,000 spectators, it is one of the few large opera houses in the world. Welcome to today's Ching Chow Morning News. Let's start with political updates. North Korea defines South Korea as hostile nation. According to the Korean Central News Agency, on October 17, North Korea passed a constitutional amendment designating South Korea as a hostile country, providing legal backing for the two-state theory proposed by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in December of last year. An official from South Korea's Ministry of Unification stated that North Korea's action contradicts the desires of both South Koreans and North Koreans for reunification, characterizing it as an anti-unification and anti-national move. The official emphasized that the South Korean government will firmly respond to all provocations from North Korea, steadfastly implement the follow-up measures of the August 15 new unification strategy, and promote the realization of peaceful reunification based on freedom and democracy as outlined in the constitution. Malaysia grants automatic citizenship to children born overseas to women. According to reports from Kuala Lumpur, the Malaysian parliament recently passed a constitutional amendment allowing children of Malaysian women born overseas to automatically become citizens. Previously, only children of Malaysian men born abroad had this right, while women faced complicated and challenging application procedures. This amendment aims to eliminate discrimination against women in citizenship matters. Additionally, under the new amendment, all abandoned babies found in Malaysia without known parents will be presumed to have Malaysian mothers, allowing them to automatically become citizens. This change seeks to reduce the number of stateless individuals in Malaysia. Hamas leader Sinwar assassinated. According to reports from Reuters and AFP, on October 17, Israeli Foreign Minister Katz announced the death of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar. The Israeli army discovered several militants inside a building in Gaza and subsequently blew it up. They later found that one of the deceased militants resembled Sinwar and extracted DNA for identity testing. Sinwar has been the leader of Hamas in Gaza since 2017. He has not made a public appearance since the conflict between Israel and Hamas escalated on October 7 last year. His leadership was seen as a continuation of Hamas's resistance strategy, as he was less inclined than Ismail Haniyeh to pursue a truce with Israel and maintained closer ties with Iran. Myanmar military government faces setback again. Comprehensive news from Yangon reports that since June, an alliance comprising the Tong National Liberation Army, the Arakan Army, and the Myanmar Kokong National Democratic Alliance Army, known as the Three Brothers Alliance, has launched new attacks on Myanmar government forces. This wave of offensives has plunged northern Shan state into conflict. A spokesman for the Tang National Liberation Army announced that they have captured the last Myanmar government military base in Shipa Town, Shan state, after weeks of fighting. Shipa Town, located along the road from Mandalay, Myanmar's second largest city, to the Chinese border, has a population of about 20,000 and is crucial for trade, handling transactions worth hundreds of millions of dollars annually. Currently, Myanmar's military government has not commented on the fighting in Shipa. Germany's Chancellor Scholz calls for new policies to save industry. According to Reuters, German Chancellor Scholz recently announced plans to invite major domestic business associations and labor unions to a meeting in October to discuss a new policy aimed at saving German industry. High energy costs, weak global demand, the transition to a net-zero economy, and increasing competition are posing significant challenges to Germany's export-oriented industrial model. Previously, Germany agreed to reduce electricity taxes for all manufacturing companies to the lowest level permitted by EU law and to increase and extend compensation for five years for 350 companies most likely to relocate and face international competition. Seoul police chief found not guilty in Itaewon tragedy. According to South Korean news, 
On October 17, the South Korean District Court ruled that former Seoul Police Chief Kim Kwang Ho was not guilty of duty related manslaughter in the 2022 Halloween Stampede tragedy in Itaewon. On Halloween, October 29, 2022, over 100,000 people flocked to the Itaewon area, primarily young people celebrating the first Halloween without epidemic prevention restrictions in three years. A stampede occurred, resulting in the deaths of more than 150 people and injuries to over 300 others. Kim Kwang Ho is the highest ranking police official held accountable for the Itaewon incident. Targeting specific protein may effectively treat osteoporosis. According to Xinhua News Agency, British researchers have recently discovered that a protein called CLEC14A affects the bone formation process. Inhibiting this protein may help treat diseases such as osteoporosis. Animal experiments show that mice lacking the gene for this protein exhibit higher osteoblast maturity and improved bone development. Additionally, inhibiting the protein's action with antibodies produces similar results. Bone diseases like osteoporosis significantly impact the quality of life for many people worldwide. Current treatments are limited and often come with side effects. These findings could pave the way for the development of new treatments. Recently, soda ash futures fell over 8%, with multiple contracts for downstream glass products also hitting their limits. That's all for today's Qingqiao Morning News. Thanks for watching. Join us at the same time tomorrow.